No Time to Die, uh, fifth and final of Craig's uh, outings as James Bond. And I forget. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm just gonna check it right now. I gotta know how many how many movies is this for James Bond? Isn't this number five? Oh, it's five for Craig. Uh, oh, just in, James Bond in total. Yeah, in total, aren't we up to like 26? 26. Hey, I nailed it. How did I know nice. that? Nice. How did I know that? You liked this one, you told me. I, I loved it. You loved uh, it. I loved it. I, uh, this is definitely my favorite Bond film. I, I, I wasn't annoyed at all. Uh, and I think there was only a little bit of like lull moment where I was just kind of like, oh, this is dragging on. This is, are, we, are we getting to the movie yet? Like the ending yet or something? But right. Yeah. Other than that, oh my God. I was very impressed and very happy and I had a lot of fun. Now, hey, before we get started, um, I thought about this and I think we should just throw this spoiler warning out there and just go full spoilers because if you haven't seen it by now, you don't care. Right? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um but yeah, um so yeah, even at yeah, two hours and forty five, um I I was I was cool with it. I think you mentioned the, the low point for you was at the for a little while at the enemy seat the classic secret base. Yeah. Uh, and that's another thing that I really liked about the film. Uh, it threw in a lot of classic Bond tropes, but it wasn't like bad. It was good. Uh, and yeah, there, there was a few moments where I was like, oh, come on. Like, or like, yeah, I can't, you can't do that. But, but yeah, it was mostly at the island. We get, we get the typical Bond villain island with giant structures and contraptions and stuff. It was fun. Yeah, I felt I felt a, a few uh, pinpricks, but you know they didn't they didn't last. They didn't stick with me. I really hate kill quips. This one has a doozy. <laughs> this one has a really <laughs> shitty one. Yeah, <laughs> it was the yeah. What accuse gives him like a watch that can like send high powered electricity voltage or something to shut down machines. And I guess he used it to kill a guy that was choking him that had a electronic eye. One of his eyes was like electronic and he's talking to Q. He was like, Hey, I just showed someone your watch. It blew their mind. And I was like, ah, I wasn't. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Wasn't, wasn't good. How'd you like that guy as a heavy? I liked his eye. Yeah. The eye was really cool. Um, and I, I liked the use of the eyes in the whole thing. Uh, because our, our, our kind of pre-villain villain, Christoph Waltz, which I guess was like a villain in one of the previous films. Uh, he, well, he was right. set up a meeting with like an eye. I, sorry for the audience. I've only seen Casino Royale. I don't think I've seen the other Daniel Craig ones. Sorry to disappoint. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, I can, I can unreservedly recommend, uh, Skyfall. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, you know, and that actually that brings up a, an interesting point for me because this film had so many direct connections to the previous film Spectre, and you hadn't seen that one, and you didn't right. feel, but you didn't feel uh, lost or confused. You, you there was no point where you were like, "Who is this person, and why? Did, why how are they connected to this other person?" Not at all. They told you who the people were that you're interacting with. Even the big party where all the Spectre agents get killed and stuff at the beginning. By the way, great, great fun with that, too. Especially, like, the lady that he's working with for a couple minutes. Uh, I know you liked her, too. She was a massive highlight of the film. I could watch yeah. I could watch those two bake bread um, <laughs> for, 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 for hours. <laughs> That's that's a good way to put it. Yeah, no, they they had a lot of chemistry. She was, was fun to watch. She, she was super fun, and I feel like, um, I feel like especially like ultra sexy women like that, like don't often get an opportunity to be goofy, right? In a way that she was, um, right? Yeah, yeah. She's she was definitely a high point. Um, I looked her up. She was the girlfriend in um. She's the digital girlfriend from Blade Runner 2049. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. No, I can see that. Yeah. That's awesome. Sure. Nice so catch. 
So another question, or two other questions for you. They're kind of like a paired question. Like, I'm, I'm really curious why you like this one so much. And I, you know, I know, like, you know, we've, we've talked, uh, we've done, this is our fourth. Uh, well, let's see. I mean, this is just a brush pass. Right. On the film. <laughs> but we have done four Bond films. We've covered uh, one James, uh, Sean Connery, Connery, Roger Moore. Pierce Brosnan. Mm-hmm. And uh, and and Daniel Craig in Casino Royale, uh, just maybe out of those four, or in general, what was it that this film did that the other films didn't do that you liked? Well, uh, I think it is what this film didn't do that the other films did do. The one thing it did do that they didn't was have like a really seamless kind of story, even though it kind of kept going towards the end. Uh, it, I didn't feel angry. Like, I wasn't like, what? What are we doing here? You know, like, it, it wasn't just, and, and for the most part, I mean, you know, I said this in our previous uh, episodes, I, I don't like calling Bond films spy films because they're just like action films with spies in them. Mm-hmm. And even, even though this film had less tradecraft than the other Bond films. Virtually um, none. None. Like, yeah, just like maybe like a camera or something, you know, and this had more gadgets than I think Casino Royale did. And the gadgets weren't annoying. I think one of the things that I really hated about From Russia with Love was that like Q had just like read the film script and was like, okay, here are the gadgets that are so specific for one specific situation. I just happen to have a crystal ball that tells you you're going to need these gadgets. Well, in this film, the gadgets that Bond gets seem to be like adaptive. You know what? Like the, you might need these in a lot of different situations. You know what I mean? Like the watch and like even the car that had the mini gun headlight. Dope as shit, by the way, when he's, uh-huh. when he's just spinning, you know, like in NASCAR, when they win, they like spin in a circle. He does that in his like Ashton Martin and the headlights drop and mini guns pop out and start. Sh- yeah. Like, like even, even that's the other thing. The, the over the top action wasn't even that over the top. The car chases were so fun and, and the fighting didn't suck and the gun, sh- even like and going back to that party, the specter party with that chick, um, that we liked so much. Uh, I guess they were in Jamaica or something. Cuba, Cuba. Um, that was Cuba. Cuba. Okay, they were in Cuba. And oh my god, like they're shooting and jumping and doing like you know, it, like aerial like cartwheel kick thingies. And and I didn't. I I wasn't pissed off. Versus like a lot of Bond action is is like usually just glorified like Star Trek action. You know what I mean? As much as I love Star Trek, I mean, you, you gotta you gotta agree with me that the action is kind of silly. <laughs> um, so that's that's. I think the one thing it did do was had this seamless story that I, I was engaged. You know what I mean? I didn't feel like jarred where I was like, "What are we doing here?" Uh, and then the thing that it didn't do for the most part was didn't do annoying stuff. You know what I mean? That didn't make sense. Everything kind of made sense. And, it, and again, it didn't have any tradecraft. <laughs> right. Um, I guess, you know, I, I guess the, the best I could call is like uh, that blonde guy uh, infiltrating and getting close to, to Felix and Bond. Uh, oh, his, yeah, yeah. The Mormon. Yes. With, yeah, with his goofy fanboy attitude. Like he was, he, 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 played, he played that very well. And Very was, well. <laughs> uh, and especially because of the way he turns out to be such a dick, you know, it kind, it kind, I don't know, kind of reminded me of. Uh, remember in um, the Sam Rockwell film, um, what was it where he, he's playing? Chuck- oh, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. Right when you find out that that one super annoying guy <laughs> the couple yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> right uh, was an agent. Like you just oh you just hate him so, that much more. Right. Um, so yeah. <laughs> and I think the other tradecraft was compromising um our our love lead into killing her uh Christoph Waltz. Right? The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh yeah, I have I been she- I have been thinking about that a little like I um I'm going back to you know he he threatens her he says this the reason you're going to do what I say you're going to do is because you know that I will kill the person you love most. And 
at that time we're thinking that it's Bond, but uh, then later I think it maybe turns out that he's referring to her daughter. Oh yeah. Oh oh oh, oh. that's where you go. Yeah, I thought it was Bond the whole time because they right then they cut to Bond. But then we learn about the daughter, and he's kind of taking her hostage, too. Yeah, you're right. That is kind of confusing. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. I still think it would have been Bond, but uh, it does seem like he's more concerned with their daughter later. Right. Yeah. I thought, I mean, I thought Rami was fine. Um, oh, he, he was great. His character was probably the weakest part of the whole film. Uh, but yeah, no, he, he was great as an actor. I mean, I mean, I love, I love Rami Malek. And this, that's the other thing. His cast was amazing. We have Ray Fiennes as M. Uh, and then, and then, uh, uh, Rami Malek is main villain. And then Christoph Waltz is like the pre villain villain. Yeah. I want to talk about Christoph Waltz for a second because, uh, he is, I mean, he's Ernst Blofeld. Um, he is, uh, just to catch you up. Cause I know you're not as steeped in it as I am. Like he's the ultra mastermind behind Spectre for like the first seven Sean Connery films, that character. Oh, Oh, okay. Okay. And And he's the head of Spectre. I assume that's what I got from the film. Totally. Okay. Um, Right. And, and that's what, that's what the previous film dealt with. And I had gotten so hyped For Christoph Waltz to be a Bond villain, I thought, oh my God, he could be the greatest Bond villain of all, a villain of all time. And I kind of felt a little let down in Spectre uh, by him. But in this film, I thought he totally redeemed himself. I I totally was absolutely just chilled to the bone by his creepiness. (laughs) He's super creepy. He's super creepy, and he he always has that kind of just gravitas to him on screen, you know, like just uh, Christoph Waltz in general. But as playing this villain specifically, as soon as he hits the screen, he just has this gravitas of just creepiness, where you, you don't like him and you're terrified of him. You know what I mean? I, I, I yeah, absolutely. Sure. Um, car chase wise, I I want to flag. I like the one in uh, uh, Norway. Uh, when they mm-hmm. get ambushed in Norway, I thought that was, I don't know. I, even in the moment watching it, I, I was thinking like, is this possibly one of the best directed and edited car chases I've ever seen? I was absolutely on the edge of my seat, <laughs> edge, edge right. of my seat. The way they, they <laughs> yeah. drop in, they drop in the helicopter. And then, you know, there were the two vans chasing them at first. And then uh-huh. it just, it just all of a sudden you realize like, no, those guys were just meant to funnel you into this trap, drop yeah. in a helicopter. And you're like, yeah. Oh boy, here we go again. I always have to have a helicopter. But then all of a sudden the other team zooms in from, from the other side. Oh, it was just delicious. The motorcycle jumping over the hill before the whole, like, parade of trucks and suvs come out was great yeah and hey back to just bond tropes the helicopter was perfect like i think when we did the roger moore one i was like really annoyed by the helicopter but like because they were in the middle of a city and it's like shooting off rockets and shit and it's like this isn't like conspicuous whatsoever but here they're like kind of out in the middle of nowhere and and the helicopter's not shooting off rockets and stuff it's it's just there to like get a visual, like a, like a confirmed uh, visual on their target or whatever. And then there's just like parade of SUVs and motorcycles just jump over the hill and you're like, Oh shit, this is, this is serious. <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. Um, uh, the, um, the other 007, I don't remember her name. I assume she was in black Panther. Is was that she? just, is, is that just an assumption I'm making? Um, um, she does look familiar. Um, I know she's super famous cause, uh, people have been talking about her for months before this came out, um, that she was going to be it and that she might be the next 007. Um, that's a conversation we got to talk about too. Um, uh, what's it's, name? uh, Lashana Lynch. Yes. Let's see that what we, let's see what we get on her, uh, from IMDb. Uh, 
beautiful woman, commanding, yeah. pre- commanding presence. I mean, she Absolutely. definitely, I like, I mean, I like her, uh, I like the way she pops off the screen, uh, in, in scenes where she's allowed to, uh, uh-huh. <laughs> she didn't, she didn't get to do maybe quite as much as I would have liked, you right. know, like when we found I out, I mean, we found out, you know, Bond was spooked by, you know, he, he realized that they're coming after him in Norway because he knew that she was chasing, uh, I think the Rami Malek Rami Malek, character. yeah. Um, and then, you know, he finds out, well, where she's headed is like right to where you are. And he's like, well, I thought he was going after that other guy and they say well she is and that's when he realizes oh shit uh we're in trouble no she was in captain marvel that's what it was yeah no she wasn't in black panther yeah um but yeah the whole 007 thing because they were talking about that she might be 007 and in this film she is because uh bond is retired so Mm. she's taken on that double o mantle i guess but then she gets she offers to to reinstate Bond as 007, um, which was kind of, that was one of the choppy things for me where she just out of nowhere is just like, uh, M, can I have permission to have Bond be 007 now again? Yeah, I, 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 I poop on that one. I really yeah. do. <laughs> I, think, I, was, think, I think that's like just the Broccoli family reaching in and saying, wait a second, you can't have him go the entire movie and not be 007. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, I, I think I think that's absolutely just a note from the family on like keeping some kind of uh, you know sameness to everything, uh-huh. uh, which which to me has always been the handicap of the movies. Right. Um, but at least in the Craig films, they got to play around with uh, a lot of those tropes. I mean, you still have him showing up at a party in a tux. You're always right. going to have that. You have that in every movie. You have a helicopter in every movie. You have a some reference to the drink in every movie. I mean, the, the list Whoa, goes... Hey, well, the, the one list we both fell in love with was our Bond James Bond that you always got to have, and it was really funny. I can't believe it took the, it took us 60 <laughs> years for someone to, to come up with that very fine joke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, do you want to explain the joke or should i oh go ahead go ahead i'm not sure how i would explain it but yeah it's james yeah it's a situation where they they say you know that he's checking in somewhere right like no no no, that's that's the thing he's retired so he's he's actually checking into like mi6 headquarters or something and and the the security guard they have no idea who he is because he's kind of been out Okay. And the sec- he's like, the security guard is like, can I get your name? He's like, Bond. And then the security guard just looks at him like dumbfounded, like, who, who, who what? He's like, James Bond. And then right. so the guy has to go searching for him. <laughs> it was funny. Right. I mean, that he says, he says it like reluctantly and like kind of deflated a little <laughs> instead of, <laughs> instead of a yeah. cock of the walk, sure footed, tuxedoed guy that's, uh, uh, many of us have come to apparently uh, know and love. Um, do you think, I mean, I, I, I don't know. There's gotta be so many bets out there. Do you think they're going to keep Lashana Lynch as 007? That would be a wild one for me. Yeah. I, I, I liked what they did in this movie because it kind of forced James to accept the new 007 and he does he's not angry or jealous you can tell it stings a little bit you know he gives the it's just a number but you can tell it stings but he he eventually calls her 007 himself and and I I really appreciated that I think because she asks for permission to reinstate him I think she's not going to be that they might actually retire the number now uh, which I hope so, because then we'll have like the double O cinematic universe where we might get to meet other double O's and she's just going to be the most gangster one or something. You know what I mean? So I'm looking forward to seeing more of her, but uh, I don't like, and I think Daniel Craig said this too, that he doesn't like the idea of a woman being a double O seven specifically that it, uh, she's that she's being overshadowed by the previous man, quote unquote, when she should be carving her own presence 
Woods as her own double O. You know what I mean? And I, I liked that. I think it was Daniel Craig that somebody said that. I think it was Daniel Craig though. Um, and I really appreciate that. And I think if we got like a whole just universe of new double O's and they're all like crazy and she's just kind of the most gangster one, I would love to see that. That that would be fun. Cause I would I would go see her again. Absolutely. Oh, I would. Uh, I would as well. Yeah. If yeah. if if they went with her, I'm I'm down for it. Uh they just need to light her better in some of the darker scenes because she does have very dark skin and she can kind of get a little bit lost in the frame. Um, oh, you're talking about like lighting on the set. I was yeah. you gotta light her. Well. I was like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, like the way. Yeah, she was not lit very well, and that was kind of. But there was a lot of dark scenes, so yeah, I see what you mean. I mean, it's um, a cha- it's a challenge, but it's also it's also a movie. There are genius, you know, lighting people. You you do can and should spend the right amount of time to make sure that your main character pops off the screen the way Daniel Craig uh-huh. does. You know. Like, like, you know, when he's on the screen, like you, you can't take your eyes off him. And, and uh-huh. I would say the same for her in, you know, uh, s- any, any of the scenes where there, there was light around. Right, right, right. But, uh, just, you know, like once they got into the base, you know, where it was kind of dark, like, like it was just kind of hard to, I don't know, visually register her the way she should be registered. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but I would be down. I would. I would totally be down. And I thought I wouldn't because I was, I was of a mind like I don't know. Bond is so wrapped up in um, weird masculinity issues from the jump that I didn't think a female Bond could be possible. I'll go with any ethnicity as long as it's British. Um, but after seeing her, I think at the very minimum. And and what I was thinking when I was watching it, I was like, wow, even if they don't keep her specifically as 007, just having her come into this movie and show audiences that you could, you know, you could reset your expectations and we will meet those expectations as filmmakers. Yes. We will give yeah. you... We will... We can and will give you the charisma. We could fucking put a midget... One hand <laughs> left left-handed lesbian Eskimo. <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um we'll have uh we'll have Dinklage play him. It'll be the role yeah. of his career. <laughs> or play her. Right. Uh, yeah. And and we can pull it off. Like we can do it. Don't be afraid. You're in good hands. I felt like that's what she absolutely established. Absolutely. Yeah. She, and she was great. Yeah. I, I could, I completely agree with you. And that's probably what they were doing. Here's Daniel Craig for his last film. We're going to get a lot of great, awesome Craig moments, but let's show you what we can do. And it's possible. And look at her. She's definitely fits the bill and can do it. You know what I mean? And, and her action was great too. She, she like her handling the guns or like kicking butt her, her, her quips or like, like, you know, you can't have a bond without those British quips, and she she was able to hang, you know? And so I, I liked it. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I completely agree with you. Yeah, I just wish she'd gotten to do more, that's all. Uh, you know, I think she should have shown up earlier in the Norway sequence instead uh-huh. of, you know, because we knew she was on her way. Uh, she could have shown up earlier in that sequence, and I don't think she needed to leave the island base as early as she did, you know, kind of showing her the curtain saying, okay, your job is done now as a character. We're going to get you out of the way and focus on, focus on bond. She could have stuck. She just could have done more. Um, Yeah. I did like her, uh, how she approached bond in the, in the wig and kind of hit on him a little bit. And, and then he kind of realizes in the bedroom, Oh, you're here to give me a message. Well, Hi, how are you doing? I'm James Bond. <laughs> right. It was it was cute. I liked it. It was fun. Um, yeah, great film. Uh, my last note of what I really liked and responded to the most, and I, I think might be circling around to some of the stuff you mentioned before, but uh, you know, the intro scene was fantastic. Uh, giving our Bond girl uh, like a, a dark secret and some depth. That yeah. that she you know that Bond girls don't usually get to enjoy right. uh, was quite fun. The way Bond like shoves her out of his life, and then 
later in the movie, you know, she needs to be reintroduced and is a critical part of it. Right. Um, and then also like just the inner connections between her Blofeld, the Rami Malek character, um, you know, like, I feel like uh, one thing that I didn't realize I was missing from Bond films is like, it's usually it's, it feels like it's just Bond and everyone else. Like yeah. everyone else is just kind of like equal and, and Bond is like, you know, like 75% of the film and all the other characters are just like, you know, have decoration ta- table scraps, you know, yeah, to, yeah. to right. chew on <laughs> as characters. Right. But this felt, this felt like the most, like an interconnected, universe of characters and that's yes yes absolutely that's what i would like to see more of uh if we're if we're gonna if we're gonna keep doing this and you know uh amazon uh bought uh i guess bought mgm or bought whoever's got bond amazon's got it now oh wow okay um the broccoli family is still attached they've always been they always have final say on script and final cut and all that stuff But uh, it is interesting. Some of my culture critics have commented that we don't know what Amazon's plans are going to be, but this does kind of open up the possibility that they're going to spin out again, like you said, like a double O universe, have some, Mm -hmm. have some TV shows, like maybe some mini series, maybe, uh, you know, some stuff that they can stuff to the streamers and Mm -hmm. flesh out this world. But like every once in a while, you know, every few years we'll get like a flagship theater experience. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, I'm 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 into it. I'm into it. Definitely. Absolutely. Very excited. Um wait, what did you we didn't talk about the the song. That's always a big double O uh thing. It's we did it we got a song from Billie Eilish. Uh, uh the and and I guess the opening credits animation I like I liked. That was kind of cool. Uh but what'd you think of the song? I thought it was I thought it was okay. Uh, yeah. We did talk about it when we did our brush. Pa- uh, we did a brush pass just talking about like when the song had come out and like won the Grammy, like it's a weird situation because of COVID. Like uh, oh, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's the only time like the, the song won an award in a different year than, you know, before the movie even came out. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, right. people apparently like it a lot. I I've heard it play, you know, I do food delivery when I'm not podcasting and uh, you know, it's been at least two stops that I've made, you know, in the Jersey mics or, or wherever, where they're playing it on the radio in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's definitely out there. Uh, so I've, I've heard it. So I, I liked it. Um, yeah. That's uh, about it for me. Um, uh, so the, the main villain weapon, there's always got to be some like doomsday type of weapon. They came up with a way to spread, I guess, nanobot technology that doesn't go away. Once you get it, it's forever. And um, it spreads to each person you touch. But it, it it's dormant unless you have the specific DNA it's trying to kill. So they, they – and that's the big thing at the Spectre party is uh, they were supposed to kill Bond, but they ended up killing um, all the Spectre agents. Uh, based on their DNA. So, um, but, but if you get it on you, you're kind of like a carrier for the rest of your life. But what you have is only programmed to kill certain, uh, person. But they explain in the film that it could be reprogrammed to kill whole families and even people. So we're talking like genocide, right? And, and, oh, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I really like got, I really perked up when they said that it could be reprogrammed to uh, basically like isolate races out. Yeah. And all of a sudden I was like, holy shit, are there going to be like, is this, is this going to turn into like some white supremacists, like trying to get a hold of this? Fucking thing? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that is, that, that is terrifying because on its face at first, I was kind of sitting there thinking like, well, I mean, as far as doomsday weapons go, like, I mean, how is, how, you know, okay, I could, if you, I'm going to the uh, megalomaniacal villain store and you got two things on, on offer. You say, this thing will kill everyone. This thing will only kill certain people. I'm like, I don't know. I kind of think I like option A more. <laughs> <laughs> right. At, at first. 
But the way that it unfolded and the way you started to learn about how this is actually like really, really bad. uh, It's (laughs) I, 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 I thought it was in, ingenious and I'm going to talk, I want to talk about some story elements of how, why I think it's ingenious, but let's go back to you first. Um, oh, yeah. so yeah, so that's what leads us into the doomsday, you know, typical bond, uh, villain Island. There's these like missile silos and they've been, uh, I guess farming the chemical and the nanobots and the programming and the, the plan is to launch missiles into the, in a world and they're going to sell, uh, targets to the highest bidder, I guess. So it's a re- we're talking really creepy doomsday. Like, all right, what peoples would you like to destroy? Uh, and you're going to pay us like some quadrillion dollars or something, you know, like uh, umpteen trillion dollars and we'll just be mega rich and we'll wipe out whoever you want. Right. The um, use, the use of that kind of thing in like Syria or the Middle East, like that whole area where everything yeah. is like all, you know, ethnic tensions. Uh, yeah. Wow. Or like you could wipe out it, like you know. I'm sure one of, one of those countries would love to wipe out Israel or something, um, or or whatever. You know, uh, there's plenty of different areas or cultures on the planet that would love to see another culture or peoples wiped out. You know what I mean? So if that hit the market, I think I think all kinds of money would be jumping in. Now, at some um, point, go ahead. Oh, uh, no, uh, but I, the reason why I was bringing up the nanobots is because this is what sets up the whole island thing that we always get in a typical Bond film. And um, I just wanted to talk about the island a little bit because um, this is where it lulled for me, um, even though I love Rami Malek. And I loved the just the, the how the island looked and it was fun and, and it could have been creepy. But when there's so many moments about that, like when he lets her go. He's like, oh, you don't want my protection? I thought he was going to protect her from the nanobots or uh, he was not going to kill her, but he just lets her go. I thought there was going to be a whole twist with that, and there wasn't. It was literally just so she could get back to mommy, uh, and and I, I, didn't, I didn't believe it at all. Um, and the other thing that really, bo- uh, I guess, kind of bugged me was when, when he meets Bond in that typical, you know, Bond gets to see the villain. And Bond, like, you know, does a fake bow and, like, pulls out a gun to shoot him. And, like, just this hole in the wall, uh, floor drops <laughs> that, open and he dodges was, the bullet. <laughs> I laughed. I laughed so hard yeah. at that one. That was some bullshit. <laughs> but, yeah, those, those are kind of, uh, I guess, s- small little highlights of things I didn't like about the island. But for the most part, I loved his whole garden. You know, these are all poisonous. You see this flower? That makes people do what you tell them to do and blah, 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 blah. I liked, very- I liked it, but that part, that part felt like kind of tacked on. Like, yes, I felt like they were trying to shove some complaint. They were like, at some point realizing this guy is not complicated enough. He needs something more. <laughs> okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, it was his backstory. I guess a specter agent murdered his whole family and she, yes. she would, the, the love lovely. Uh, she, she was, um, the daughter of that specter agent. And so he, he like let her live or something. Correct. So yeah. yeah, the, the mega weapon is, is insidiously complex. And I'm curious, like if we did a full treatment on this movie, like, like we do, uh, you know, for, for most of our movies, I'd be really getting in there and trying to figure out what are the actual rules in, in play. Um, uh-huh. I like to think that, and I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I like to think that it works somewhat like Stuxnet. Like, uh, you know, that was the computer virus that, uh, shut down centrifuges in, uh, Iranian, uh, nuclear uranium enrichment facilities. Uh-huh. And instead of, instead of figuring out how to put a virus into getting the virus into those facilities, they just, broadcast the virus out into the world everywhere and every system it got into it would say it would figure out like okay am i in an iranian centrifuge if if no just duplicate myself and duplicate myself uh to any other place i can if yes carefully fuck with the centrifuges (laughs) um 
And I like to think that it, it works that way because, but I'm not sure. So I don't want to, I don't want to put my total finger on that, but ultimately uh, all this cool complexity of the, of the mega virus becomes extremely personal to bond in the way that it plays out in a way that I absolutely loved because what it does is, you know, once he's infected, he cannot. Okay. If it works like Stuxnet, he can't live it, as long as he's alive on earth and comes into contact with any other person, even if he doesn't go see his daughter. I mean, that would be bad enough that you just yeah. infected him with something that says you can never come within 20 yards of your daughter, she'll die if you do. Yeah. Right. And and that sucks. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. But if it works like Stuxnet, then it's even worse. It's like as long as you're alive, it's only a matter of time. Right. Before it kills her. And she that- could go to the other side of the globe and at some point everyone's gonna become a carrier and touch his daughter and his wife. Right, right. I, it could be right. it. It could be years, but it's also like it's the six degrees of separation, motherfucker. Yeah, and and so he has to die, and that, and that's pretty much you know how how we we lose our bond character, right. and, uh, and and it's, and, yeah, it's the, really insidious. But the reason yeah. the reason this this whole like complicated virus, which is awesome in its own right, but really drills down the story and really feeds into uh, this fantastic opportunity for bond to sacrifice himself is because the recurring theme through the Craig movies is that he is dangerous to the people he loves. Mm-hmm. Right? Absolutely. And I am, I am someone that some, some of my critics don't really like this kind of stuff. I really like it when the theme is made concrete you know, when you when you find a way to to carry the message of the story and make and bring it into the real world and make it a like like an obvious concrete thing. And I think that's what this accomplished. He is a threat to the people he loves. He does need to die. This is also, I don't know, Fear Agent, my favorite comic book of all time, pretty much like has kind of a similar ending. Um but G G I I guess if maybe not having uh, swallowed as much uh, Daniel Craig, James Bond movies as I did. And, you know, I watched, I watched all the movies in the two weeks leading up to this one. So I feel pretty confident in saying like, it's a, it's a constant thing. Like you just, you bond, you're fucking toxic. You destroy (laughs) everything. You know, the people you love or get close to, they fucking end badly. Right. Yeah. And and this, you know, his his final sacrifice, which is nicely like played up, it it just wraps up the whole fucking package in a way that I love. You know, it's true. You are toxic. You are gonna have to sacrifice yourself in order to protect like the finally you're gonna have to own up to this. Yeah, absolutely. Um the only way to keep them alive is for you to die. Yeah. Um, I guess he had Time to die. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I, got a I don't know. I got two hours and 45 minutes. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but yeah, totally. I totally dug it. I'm looking forward to watching it again. Yeah. Um, and, and not even just as a Bond film. It was a great movie. Uh, I, I would probably give it a four out of five stars for me. I, I, I would probably watch this again. I had so much fun and I don't like action films. Um, so it's, it, this, this really, this really, I guess, scratched an itch that I generally don't have. So I, I liked it a lot. Yeah. I'm also at a 4.5, uh, which is what I would have uh, in our recent Casino Royale episode uh, 4.5 is where Casino Royale normally would have landed for me, but the audacity and ambition of rebooting James Bond in the way they did is what gave the final like plus 0.5 up to a five. But I'll I'll sit at this one as a 4.5, only because you know it, it 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 it's not pioneering. It's landing the plane, yeah, beautifully. 
Yeah. Uh, but I'm still always going to, if I only could watch one Bond film ever again, uh, I would still pick Casino Royale as, as, oh, just, yeah, yeah. as just the must have. Right. And I'm, I'm good. Uh, yeah, me too. Yeah. Tell them the stuff. Uh, if you don't already, please subscribe to our podcast uh, on any podcast app you find. You can search Spies Like Us podcast and we'll pop right up. Um, uh, definitely shoot us a line, email us, or hit us up on Facebook. Let us know if you love us, you hate us. Either way, we're happy to hear from you. Um, you can email us at spieslikeus.net and there's like a contact form. Or you could jump on facebook.com slash podcast. Or our Twitter is spies underscore like us. Uh, and give us a line. Uh, Todd and I always pay attention to people that hit us up and we'll definitely respond to you. Uh, and we look forward to hearing from you. Yeah. And if you enjoyed this uh, Brush Pass episode or any of our episodes, the number one thing you can do, just tell one person. Just tell one friend. Or if you hate us, tell one of your enemies that they would like this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget to tell him at a park bench. Uh, yeah, right. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we we have not we have not picked our next movie yet. We're we're right now we're uh, still in the middle. We're going to give you some Homeland uh, That's right, yeah. stuff. Uh, I don't think we've landed on our next movie. Did you have any thoughts, Dave? I, th- I, I was thinking conversation, but I'm not sure if we're doing that yet. I know I know we were going to do that, but then the Bond thing, No Time to Die was coming out. And we're like, well, no, we have to do Bond. Um, uh, so I was hoping the conversation, if you want to do that. All right. But let's, let's put it out there that if you're listening and there's a movie or TV show you want us to cover, uh, Dave just told you a million ways that you can shout out at us and uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll get, we'll get right on that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm good to go. Sounds good. Join us next week. The preceding transmission sampled the song Enter the Party by Kevin McLeod and sound effects from freesound.org. Attributions and links are found at spieslikeus.net.